Let's say you were about to buy this Pokemon base set booster pack off of me, and then I told you that I've x-rayed the Pokemon booster pack and I know what the hollow foil hit's gonna be. Would you still buy this booster off of me, or would you go to someone else that hasn't x-rayed this pack? That's what I want to talk about today, and that's what's got the entire Pokemon card community in an absolute flurry. I've seen so many videos on this this week that I wanted to make a video I guess explaining why there's a real life Pokemon card x-ray machine out there at the moment and I want to get your opinion and I'm so excited to read this YouTube comment section. So give this video a watch and then let me know what your thoughts are down below. But let's go back a couple of weeks and work out how this machine came to be. So basically there's this industrial inspection company over in America that inspects really small parts for moving things like cars or boats or ships. And they inspect like the bolts or they inspect really small rods that go inside of these vehicles when they break because they want to work out how to fix them. So they'll x-ray the bolt, work out where the crack is and work out why it's cracked. But they were x-raying really, really small things. And one of the employees was like, hang on. If we're x-raying really tiny things here, how small and how thin of a thing can we x-ray? Like if I put my Pokemon card boost back in this bad boy, could we x-ray it and work out if there's a hollow foil inside and then go a step further and work out what exactly is on the hollow foil card? So then they uploaded a video to YouTube showing that their first ever test process was putting a hollow hypno in between several other Pokemon cards putting it in the x-ray machine and seeing if they could actually tell it was a hollow hypno in the middle. So then they tried it with a few Pokemon boosters and apparently that was so successful, they tried it with a Pokemon Evolutions box. This is a $700 box that contains four packs. And sure enough, this machine can not only see inside of the box and see that it has the four packs, it can also see inside of those packs that are inside of the box and see what cards are inside of the packs. And not only that, it could see the inside of one of the packs was a full art Mega Blastoise. Now a lot of you might be thinking this isn't actually the first time that someone's actually worked out how to find a hollow in a Pokemon booster pack. If you're unfamiliar, there's actually a common term or a common practice that's in the Pokemon card community where you weigh Pokemon boosters and the heavier the pack means there's usually a hollow card inside. But this is a whole other ball game. This is utilizing the latest technology to work out not only there's a holo in that pack, but what exactly is on that holo card. That changed the game, and they published these results to the internet, and I think that's where my friend uh, Jlove made this video talking about how they randomly just uploaded this video of them explaining they've cracked the code, they've x-rayed a Pokemon booster and they know what's inside, so they could pretty much x-ray any Pokemon pack. And at the same time they did that, a random guy on YouTube uploaded a video saying that in private, he's been working on his own Pokemon card x-ray machine and he's invented one as well, but he never told the general public until he saw this company's video because he wanted to keep it a secret. He wanted to register, I think it was the trademark and the patent of it, so that no one else could have this technology and he could protect the Pokemon card community because he thinks it would ruin everything. But obviously it was too late and this other company had now invented their machine so now we've got these two x-ray machines that are out there, which is just nuts. Now, obviously this has been reported by a whole bunch of different websites. I read a really good article on Pokebitch all about it, but also I watched my friend Jlove's video about it, and he got to speak to the company. So I'll link the articles and videos down below. But I wanted to talk about all the questions and concerns that this has really raised for everybody. Now, obviously this affects the most, the vintage boost pack collector. Um, it doesn't necessarily impact the modern day booster pack collector. And that's because of the price point. These boosters right here are worth so much more money than the modern day packs. And the thing is, um, these are worth so much money because some of the cards in here are worth an absolute boatload. So x-raying this would work out in your benefit because you'd want to see if there's a Charizard in here and if there's not, you'd want to get rid of it. Now, why doesn't that affect modern? Because obviously there's expensive modern cards and the packs are so cheap. That's because the only company, which is this industrial inspection company, uh, that are offering to use their machine for Pokemon boosters are going to charge $75 per pack that they x-ray. So pretty much you wouldn't spend that money on like a modern pack, you'd spend it on a vintage pack trying to work out what's inside of it. But that is just so concerning because then you can't really trust who's actually x-rayed their packs and who hasn't. So obviously you'd always want to buy off someone that hasn't x-rayed their boosters. But how could you tell? 
There was a really good comment I read on the Poke Beach article saying that just like when you go out in the sun, you get sunburnt, there should be some sort of marking on a boost pack like when you put it in an x-ray machine, there's some sort of thing that comes up on the booster so you could clearly identify the packs that have been x-rayed. Um, so you could kind of tell, all right, they know what's inside of that one. I kind of understand why they're selling it or why they haven't opened it. And that just opens a whole can of worms for market manipulation or like people charging more or less for their boosters, depending on if they're honest about what they know is inside of that booster. Um, and if they got an x-rayed, but I honestly wouldn't let this cause too much of a concern right now. I don't think there's going to be a flood of people sending all their products in to get x-rayed or people uh, inventing these x-ray machines because it is just so expensive at the moment. Um, and also, I think at the end of the day, what makes Pokemon cards so fun and so interesting to me is the unknown. I don't want to know what's inside of packs. I enjoy collecting things and if I'm collecting sealed things, I enjoy collecting those because I have no idea what's inside. I don't really want to know what's inside and if I really do, I'm just going to open it. And I know when you think about X-raying Pokemon cards, you think there's so many cons involved, there's no winning in this situation, no one should ever have uh, invented this machine. I think the positive, if we look at any positive, is you could verify what's inside of a box or what's inside of packs. And what I'm getting at there is, this would have saved Logan Paul when he bought his, uh, what was it, base set sealed case, and then he found out G.I. Joe was inside. If he just popped it in the X-ray machine, he probably would have seen that, oh yeah, there are base set boxes in there, or no, there's G.I. Joe in there, and would have saved so much money, so much time, and I guess so much drama. So that's probably the big pro of this situation. But yeah, there's also a bit of a downside for the vintage sealed collector. And since I recorded this video, the company itself actually updated their website with a big giant yellow clause as soon as you go on there and it says, we're aware and working through the moral dilemma of CT scanning sealed collectibles. I thought this was so interesting. So I went to my local Pokemon card shop and thought I'd just get the general public's feel on what they think about a Pokemon X-ray machine. You think if someone could X-ray your Pokemon booster, would you want to know what's inside of it? Or do you think the fun is uh, is not knowing what's inside of it? The fun is not knowing what's inside of it. So overall not not so good? Yeah. yeah. Overall I think it's not not good for the for the brand, for the franchise, yeah. for the fan base. But right now, the technology is really in its infancy. It's primarily used for vintage packs, and it's unlikely to have a really widespread impact on the market. Most collectors won't really be affected by this, but honestly, as the technology evolves and becomes way more accessible, we could start seeing a few changes on how, like, sealed products and, and different Pokemon cards are valued at shows or, I guess, online. So in short, should you be worried? As I mentioned before, not really. I really enjoy sealed products because of the mystery of what's inside. That's the thrill of the chase. But I think this video is definitely the start of a conversation you'd want to keep your eye on if you are a serious Pokemon card collector. So I think whether you find this a huge downside or you find this a really big upside, we got to adapt and navigate, I guess, to technology growing with us and it's always evolving. So yeah, curious what we do going forward and curious what you guys think we should do going forward.